So let's start with Ubuntu. This goes directly into the trash category because I already made uh, one video at least about talking about why Ubuntu is trash and why you shouldn't use it. And I stand by that. I think Ubuntu is trash. It's probably the worst distro like out there for everybody. Like if you're a beginner and you start with Ubuntu, for sure you're going to go back to Windows like 100% because of many reasons. One, the software catalog on Ubuntu is extremely small because of snaps. Second, because of snaps, you're going to have a bad, bad experience. Like things are not gonna work. And uh, before the Ubuntu like elitist people come in my comment and put this like on the video or whatever, what I'm saying is actually true. I can link you the same time video and I will link it in the description. I will also link you my Wine 9.22 video where I've also explained the problems, at least some of the problems I had with Ubuntu. Then I will also link you the review that Air Max made about Ubuntu, the latest Ubuntu release and you can watch those and see how many problems Ubuntu has and I say that snaps which is a packaging format created by Canonical which, which are the creator of Ubuntu it's probably the worst thing that ever happened to the Ubuntu desktop like the thing that you have to understand is that Canonical doesn't care about the Ubuntu desktop anymore they only care about the server and because that's what makes them a lot of money actually and so they don't give a shit anymore about the ubuntu desktop experience like once in a time canonical were the innovator of the ubuntu desktop and the linux desktop really they created uh, the ubuntu like uh, for phone for smartphones i don't remember how it's called then they created the unity desktop they made uh, a, a, like a distro that ubuntu at the time was extremely friendly for beginners like Ubuntu got its reputation for being friendly because when it came out Linux were in a very very different space and it was very difficult to install for most people and Ubuntu was this fresh new thing that made Linux easy for everybody and so they once cared a lot about the Linux desktop but right now they don't care anymore and it seems like we can all see that because the Ubuntu experience is trash it's complete and utter trash and no beginners should use it and people should stop like suggesting Ubuntu to beginners because they're gonna go back to Windows if they use Ubuntu that's 100% for sure and so yeah that's why I put Ubuntu in the trash category so now let's move on to Linux Mint and this goes to the best category, both Linux Mint based on Ubuntu and both Linux Mint based on Debian, which is called Linux Mint Debian Edition. Both these two versions of Linux Mint go to the best category. If you're a beginner, Linux Mint is very, very good because it has a similar layout to Windows by default. But it's not just about that. Linux Mint is a, I'd say, very stable um, Linux uh, version, which is also probably its downside because Linux Mint is good but not for everybody. Like, if you have a computer that is like one years old, you shouldn't use Linux Mint. Like, avoid it completely. But if your computer is at least two years old, in terms of GPU and CPU, then yes, it's a, it's a go. You can use Linux Mint. But if your computer is like one year old or like completely brand new, then just avoid Linux Mint completely. I've seen people on like Reddit talk about uh, why isn't my 9070 XT working on Linux Mint or why isn't my 5090 working on Linux Mint? Because Linux Mint, sadly, and I say sadly, it's too stable. It's too stable. And I think they handle the NVIDIA drivers incorrectly. And they handle, like, if Linux Mint were a little bit more, more rolling, like, even just with the kernel, it would be amazing. But it's not. And it doesn't make the Linux, like, doesn't make Linux Mint bad. It just makes it not fit for everybody. So if your computer is a little bit older, like at least two years old, especially with the GPU, then yes, you can use a Linux Mint and you're probably going to have an amazing experience. But as I said, this is very important. If your computer is one years old or it's very, very new, don't use a Linux Mint, at least until the 2026 version of Linux Mint releases, which is going to be the next LTS. And so yeah, this is what it is about Linux Mint. It's an amazing distro, not for everybody, I'd say for most people. Then we can go with Zorin OS. I've tried it not so much and I think it's a good concept. It's very like similar to Linux Mint and I'm gonna put it in the OK category because while it's like good, it's also not, uh, I'd say at the same level of Linux Mint because the downside of Zorin is that it's probably even more outdated than Linux Mint when it comes to the desktop environment. Like Zorin OS right now ships GNOME 43 and if you are a gamer, you don't want to use GNOME 43. Like GNOME 43 is, is years in the past now right like you don't want to use GNOME 48 if you're a gamer like you actually want to use the latest version of the desktop environment to have the best Wayland experience and the best experience in general so that's why I can only put Zorin OS in the OK category 
because I like the operating system, I've tried it, but the problem is with the desktop environment. It's too old and it updates so, so slowly, which I just can recommend to anybody. But otherwise, if you're okay with Zorin OS and with running GNOME 43, then it's a very good uh, distro. So now, Let's move on to Cache OS, which I've talked about Cache OS. I want to talk more about Cache OS because I want to make more videos about it. But of course, it goes in the best category because it's the best distro. In my opinion, it's the best distro out there for gamers and for everybody, really, because it's based on Arch. And you may say, oh, but for beginners, yeah, but I'd, I'd say Cache OS is the best and the most user-friendly Arch-based distro for beginners. Okay, it's not that hard to use Cache OS at all. And I've made a video about it, which I'm going to link in the description, which tells you how to do it. It's literally just, just a 10 minute video. And the Cache OS part is like five minutes. That's all you need to know on how to use Cache OS as a beginner. Like it's not hard at all. It's probably not as easy as Linux Mint. Like if Linux Mint in terms of like ease of use is a 10 out of 10, Cache OS then it's a 9 out of 10 in terms of ease of use, right? You just have to maybe install one application by yourself and that's it. Like that's all you have to do in order to like be a beginner and be able to use Cache OS. And the advantages of Cache OS is that like really in my experience, it has been extremely, extremely stable. And it has been in my experience, the most stable Arch-based distro and also the most performant one. So if you're looking for performance, then Cache OS is what you want to use. And if you have newer computers, then you have to use Cache OS or something Arch based. That's why it's the best distro. Cache OS works on every computer. It's very fast. It's the most performant distro out there. And it's very stable. It's a very, very stable. It's the most stable Arch based distro. Because of this, I can put it clearly in the best category. So yes, Cache OS and Linux Mint are the best, best distros. Now, if you're a beginner, I suggest to try Linux Mint. And if you have a bad experience with Linux Mint, just go directly to Cache OS. Like you don't have to try any other distro. The next distro is Anduino S. has been talked about a lot in this last month. And I, I've tried it on a laptop and on a computer. And I say it's very good. I actually I have to say it's very good. It's made by a Microsoft employee. And I've tried it. It's very good. Like I have nothing bad to say about the distro, except that they use uh, the old Ubiquiti installer that Ubuntu used and Linux Mint still uses, which is bad. It's a bad installer because it, it has an extremely nasty bug where uh, that has never gotten fixed. I don't even know why, but nobody fixed it if you have two ssds or more he's going to install the bootloader grub in a random ssd so maybe you install linux mint as a dual boot or even anduino s as a dual boot for windows and then the bootloader instead of getting installed on the disk where you've installed anduino s or linux mint it gets installed into the windows disk and so that's bad it's an extremely bad bug and you know if you're a beginner you probably don't know how to fix it and it's annoying it's extremely annoying so that's why i cannot put it in the best also i think it good is perfectly fine for anduino s then arch linux this goes in the good category it's it's an amazing distro it's definitely not for beginners although it's it got a lot easier to install because of arch installed but still you don't really need to run Arch Linux if you're a beginner because you have Cache OS, which is literally Arch, but more performant. But still, Arch Linux is an amazing distro. I honestly don't know what else to say. It's just an amazing distro. There's nothing to say other than that it's amazing, but I cannot put it in the best because it's not for beginners and this video is targeted towards beginners. But yeah, like it's absolutely an amazing distro and I have nothing bad to say about Arch Linux really. Then Bazite, this distro, I'm gonna put it into the best category but not for like computers, okay? I'm gonna, for like your main computer, Bazite is a no-go. But when it comes to a home theater PC, or like a living room PC connected to the TV, then it becomes the best. I have Bazite installed on my living room PC, and it is absolutely amazing. It's the best thing ever. It works out of the box. And you know, when it comes to these type of PCs that are connected to a TV that you use like they are a console, Bazite is the perfect distro. But I'll repeat it again when it comes to desktop, since it's an atomic based distro, and it's also a distro that like it's specifically made for handles and home theater PCs, it's really a no-go for the desktop. Unless you really like Bazite, I say for a desktop PC, it's a no-go, but for a home theater PC or a living room type of PC, then it's absolutely the best. Now, when it comes to Pop OS, I put it as a no-go, not because it's a bad distro, I think it's a good distro, but it's not been updated in years now. And it has kind of been updated, but the thing is that PopOS, like the developers of PopOS, System76, they're working on the desktop called Cosmic, and so until Cosmic is released as a stable release, and it's going to get a beta release soon, so we're still in alpha, it's going to get a beta release soon, but until Cosmic gets released as a stable release, PopOS 24.04 is not going out of the beta phase. Like, 
You can install Pop OS 24.04, but it's going to have Cosmic as the desktop and it's going to be unstable. So this is not what you really want to use. Instead, what they still offer is Pop OS 22.04, which is outdated and I don't recommend it to anybody really. Maybe next year it will be on the best, but at the moment it's a no-go. And Manjaro, I'll say it's between no-go and okay. Like I've used Manjaro, it's been my really first distro that I've used because Linux Mint wasn't working on my computer because it was too new. So I've installed Manjaro and I've used Manjaro up until five or four months ago. And in that period, it was really good for me. I would have put it into like either good or best, but I've tried it recently. And I don't know, I, fe I felt like it got worse. It got more unstable and it got worse. Like one time I've installed Manjaro and I've opened the Paymac, which is like the GUI installer software on Manjaro and it crashed. And every single time I try to open Paymac again, it would not open. Like you understand what I mean? I've seen also uh, some other like small things that made me think that Manjaro got worse in these last months. And so, so I'd say uh, no-go. Right now Manjaro is a no-go state and it was crazy because last year I would have put it in the good or best category but right now I feel like it got worse and so it's it's gonna go into the no-go for me right now. Debian, I'd say it's between okay and good because while it is a very very good distro it's still very updated. And that's the point of Debian, like the point of Debian is quote unquote stability. That's what the problem with stable releases like Debian is that if the desktop you're using or whatever component you're using, even the kernel, if you have a bug on those operating systems like Debian and Linux Mint, you're not going to get it fixed until two years because they're not going to update the kernel and Mesa and an anything until like the next release. So they just have security updates, I, I think. And that's it, which if you're into that, if you like this model, then it's perfectly fine. It's amazing. But if you like me, don't really like this model then it's not going to work for me it's not going to work okay debian 13 is going to be really good and when it comes out it's going to be really updated but then three months after it's outdated already so if you like debian and if you like this model of like quote-unquote stable releases then debian is amazing but even generally speaking even if you don't like this model like me i can still say that debian is a very good distro so next fedora you know fedora is it's kind of weird because sometimes it's amazing and sometimes it's less amazing i'm going to put it just in the okay i wanted to put Put Fedora 42 in the good category. I've tried it many times, but Fedora 42, I'm gonna put it in the okay because it has a nasty bug in the installer. Like Fedora 42 has a new installer, which is extremely simple. It's amazing. But the problem with it is that once you get into the out of the box experience where you create your account and you set up your profile, then when you have like the map, when the map appears, when you select your time zone, then it crashes. If you click on the map to select the time zone that, where you are, and then you click next, it crashes. And they've had this bug since the release of Fedora 42. Like Fedora 42 has been released, what, one month ago, more than one month ago, and it still has this nasty bug in the out of the box experience like how they haven't fixed this it got reported so many times and they yet have not fixed it and so if you're a beginner and you install fedora you click on the time zone on the map where you are you click next and everything crashes like how is this a good experience it's not and also fedora 42 had another weird bug where if you were using an nvidia gpu steam will not open to work around this you have to put something in the terminal and and then open steam with that like argument in the terminal and then it will open. But like if you open Steam for the first time, it will not open. Like I don't even know why, honestly. But it's a Fedora only bug. And so because of those two things, I cannot really put it in the good category. Because these are very major bugs. Like imagine you're a beginner and first you cannot even install the distro because yes, it installs, but you cannot get to the desktop because the out of the box experience crashes. And second, if you even get to get to the desktop, then you cannot even open Steam. Like imagine you're a beginner, you have this shitty experience and then like you complain that Linux is trash and I will understand you because you would have had a trash experience on Linux. And also Fedora 42 has promoted the KDE Plasma version to be like on the side uh, at the same level of the workstation version, which is the one with GNOME, but it's still not polished enough. Like if you use NVIDIA, it's gonna be harder to install the NVIDIA drivers on the Fedora KDE Plasma version, because unlike the GNOME version where they have the NVIDIA drivers directly into the GNOME software, which is super easy to install, you don't have the NVIDIA drivers directly into Discover 
on the Fedora KDE version. And so it's a pain. If you're a beginner and you use Fedora KDE 42 and you have an Nvidia card, you're going to have a painful experience installing the drivers. I think that if the distro doesn't care about the Nvidia users, it's a shitty distro. It's a trash distro because Nvidia, as much as people want to hate on it, it's the most used GPU vendor. And so it makes no sense not making the experience easier for Nvidia users. And CashUS is the best distro for Nvidia users. They make the experience simple, working out of the box for Nvidia users. The latest version of CashUS automatically recognizes if you have an Nvidia GPU and what version of that Nvidia GPU you have when you download the operating system. And it will automatically install the drivers that are correct for your GPU for you. So when you boot into your operating system, you already have the Nvidia drivers. You have nothing to do. Nothing to do. Not only that, but they are also the fastest at shipping the new Nvidia drivers, which makes it also the best Nvidia distro. So yeah, if you're an Nvidia user and you want to use Fedora, uh, 42 KDE Plasma, you're gonna have a hard time installing the drivers. Overall, I'd say it's okay distro. I would have loved to put it into the good category, but as, as I've explained, I cannot for the moment. Then we have Nobara. I would have wanted to put it in the best category, but it's really not. When I've tried Nobara, it didn't work. Like, it installed the system, but the Nobara updater application didn't work. Like, I clicked update, I rebooked the system, he said, oh, we have updated everything, I rebooted the system and he hasn't updated anything. And so I've like tried to update five, six times and it was always the same thing. So for me, it has been an extremely bad experience. And also Nobara, I've had some graphical glitches on KDE with the latest NVIDIA drivers, which is crazy. Like I don't have any graphical glitches on CashUS or really any other distro. Only on Nobara, I had some graphical glitches with, with an NVIDIA card on the panel specifically. And so, yeah, for me, it has been a bad experience, but for the vast majority of people that use Nobara, it's always been a good experience. So that's why I'm going to put it in the good. If you're a beginner, I don't specifically suggest you to use Nobara. I'd say CashOS is better if you're a beginner. So that's why I'm going to put it only in the good. And also because I've had a bad experience with Nobara. So I can really put it in the best right now. And then we have OpenSUSE, which I've tried it on my laptop. And I'm going to put it in the OK category for the same thing, because of the NVIDIA drivers. Like if you install OpenSUSE on an Intel laptop or an AMD laptop, then it's gonna be amazing. Out of the box, everything. But I've tried also installing it on my desktop with an NVIDIA GPU. And honestly, it was such a pain. I've tried installing the NVIDIA drivers on OpenSUSE and it's been a pain. And I'm talking about OpenSUSE Tumble with, okay? There's also OpenSUSE Leap, which seems to be a very good release, the latest 16 one. But OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is the rolling release, is the one that I've tried. And installing the NVIDIA drivers on that distro has been a pain because they don't install them out of the box. They don't have like Ubuntu has like a thing where you can select before installing the distro if you want to use the NVIDIA drivers or not. So because of that, I can't put it into the either good or best category because it is a bad experience for NVIDIA users, especially if you're a beginner. But also it's a good distro generally speaking because it's a, the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed specifically is a rolling release and it's probably one of the most stable rolling release distros out there so generally speaking users have a good experience but if you have an nvidia gpu and you use tumbleweed or leap it's probably more difficult to install the nvidia drivers so yes this is the entire tier list those three but specifically cache and linux mint are the best of the best operating system that you can install as a beginner on your computer Bazite is the best for home theater pcs and like living room pcs and yes this is my tier list let me know in the comments what you think about it. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe because it helps the channel grow a lot. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye bye.